In this video, we're going to introduce the method of joints. This is a method where we can get the internal forces in truss structures, applying the principles of particle equilibrium. We have a procedure that we use to do this. For a given truss, we look around the truss, and I'll just scroll down slightly to the truss we're going to be looking at, and we look to see on this truss, is there a joint on there that has one unknown force, or at most two unknown forces. One of the unknown forces might be a support reaction. In this case, so we'll have a look at C. In C, we have unknown force, let's call this force FBC. We have the unknown force in the member AC, so that would be FAC, we don't know that. We don't know the reaction force RC in the X direction. We don't know the reaction force R, C, Y in the Y direction. And looking at B, we don't know the reaction force R, B, X. We don't know the force in the member B, C. And we don't know the force in the member A, B. If we go now to join A, we don't know the force in the member AB, and we don't know the force in the member AC, but we do know the external force that's on there. So having a look at our rules, do we have anywhere with at least one, just one unknown force? No, we don't. But we do have a joint, in this case A, that has at most two unknown forces. And so we're gonna start our analysis at this point. Once we've chosen the joint where we're gonna start our analysis, then we have to draw the free body diagram of that joint. With the free body diagram set up, we can go on to write down and apply the equations of equilibrium. And once we have the results of the forces, so in this case, we're going to start at A. Once we know the force FAB and FAC, we can now move on and maybe look at joint B because we know this force now and we only have the unknown RBX and FBC. So we can now proceed to point B to calculate the forces there. Same with C, if we tried to move to C, we would have the, we know FAC, so this force here, but we don't know the force FBC and we don't know the two reaction forces, so we can't continue. We do have some tricks we can play where we could find out the reaction forces in advance and we'll come on to an example where we need to do that. Eventually once we've analysed all of the joints within a given truss then we can go on and draw the full truss and indicate the forces and importantly whether those forces are tension or compression. So let's move on. So we're going to start with joint A and as we said for this joint the first thing we should do is draw the free body diagram for joint A. And let's draw the forces on there. So we have the force FAB, FAC, and we have the known external force of 10 kilonewtons. For the internal forces in the truss FAB and FAC, I don't know whether they're in tension or compression, so I'm going to presume to get started that they're in tension. And finally, to complete the free body diagram, we need to know the angle that we're working at. Okay, so one of the other things that people can find difficulty with when getting started on these problems is the use of the length ratios rather than knowing the angle. So we have an X dimension of three, a Y dimension of four. Using Pythagoras, we know that the hypotenuse is five, if this is the angle theta that we're looking at. And I think it always helps when starting these problems to go back to high school mathematics. And if it helps, I still do it to this day. So, okay. Toa, yep, you might laugh, but I'd rather be laughed at than doing something like this and laughed at for getting the problem wrong. So, if this is the angle, this is the opposite, this is the adjacent, this is the hypotenuse. So, 
the si sine of the angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that, that equals four fifths. And the cos of the angle theta is the adjacent divided by the heart and use, so three fifths. And we'll use this as we go along. So now the next part of the pro problem solving process is to set up the equations of equilibrium. So we're going to first examine the sum of the forces in the x direction. And so having a look at the free body diagram I have FAC. And I'm going to call that minus as it's going in the negative x direction. We have the x component of FAB. And again, minus because it's going in the minus x direction. And now we need to take account for which proportion of that load is in the x direction. And so we use the cos of the angle, which is 3 fifths. And for this to be in equilibrium in the x direction, this must be all equal to zero. And we'll just write this as equation one for now, so we can come back to it. Now I'll write down the equation for some of the forces in the y direction. So we have, looking at the free body diagram, we have FAB pointing upwards, so it's positive. But we've only got a proportion of FAB because some of it's in the x direction. And now we need the sine of the angle. So that's multiplied by the four fifths. And also at this joint, we have the minus. So going downwards, 10 kilonewtons in the y direction from the external force. And so that must also be equal to zero. And I'll label this as equation two. So... I look at both of these equations, I can see that equation 2 only has one unknown, so I'm going to use that straight away to solve. And you can put this into the calculator, rearrange the equations. So from equation 2, we get FAB dot 4 fifths equals 10, and I can take the 4 fifths to the other side, so multiply by 5 and divide by 4 and that gets us that f a b equals 12.5 kilo newtons and because the answer is positive and we presumed that it was intention but indeed that force is acting in tension and now we've, we have the value for f a b we can go and take this value and substitute it back into the sum of forces in the x direction. So equation one that we set up. So we can now say, this. so sub for F A B in one. So F A C equals minus three fifths of F A B, which equals minus three fifths multiplied by twelve point five, which equals minus seven point five kilonewtons. And just to clarify, if the answer is negative, going in the opposite direction to which we presumed, which we presumed it was tension, therefore this must be in compression. So we have both of the forces now, FAB and FAC at node A. So we're gonna proceed now onto node B where we have two unknown forces. So again, we proceed as before and we set up the degrees of the free body diagram for this joint. So. The free body diagram of joint B. So let's draw that. So we have the joint and the forces on it. We have F A B pulling away from the joint, F B C and pulling away from the joint. And now we have 
RBX. I'm going to presume RBX to be going in the positive X direction. If the number comes out positive, then it was going to the right. If it comes out negative, then actually it should be going to the left. But we'll see as we go through with the example. So I need to set up the equations of equilibrium. So, so having a look at some of the forces in the X direction, I have R B X plus F A B multiplied by three fifths is equal to zero. And I know F A B already, so I can substitute straight in. And this gets me to R B X is equal to minus 7.5 kilonewtons. I'm going to move on to some of the forces in the y direction. So in this case we have minus FBC because it's pointing downwards we have minus FAB pointing downwards and the sine of the angle so we get the proportion of the angle that's in the y direction and that's equal to zero so we can rearrange the equation and substitute in the known force FAB and this gets us that FBC is equal to minus four fifths times by the 12.5 which equals minus 10 kilonewtons so this actually means that RB so FBC is not pulling away it's actually pushing towards the the joint there at B okay so now we're going to move on to joint C so let's draw again the free body diagram so the free body diagram of joint C. So, and there are two ways that you can draw this free body diagram, especially now that we know the magnitudes and directions of FBC and FAC. So first of all, let's draw the joint and let's put the forces on there. So we know that FBC is in compression and pushing towards joint C. We know that FAC is in compression, negative, pushing towards the joint. And we have the two unknown forces, RCX and RCY. So we could go around and set up our equation of equilibriums and make sure that the arrows indicate the directions that we know that they're going with. That's one choice that we have. Let's call that choice A. The other choice for drawing our free body diagram is that we draw the free body diagram and still put the forces, even though we know them, let's put them in the presumed tension direction, so pulling away from the joint, we're putting the reactions in the presumed positive X and Y directions, so RCX. And when we use the equations this way, what we do is we use the sign convention to determine whether we have tension or compression. So whenever we substitute, we, we substitute straight in that FBC is a minus number. And we substitute in that FAC is a minus number. Okay, whichever way you decide to do your free body diagrams, choose, choose one style and stick with it. So with this method A, let's recap that. Use the absolute values for the forces. So it's 12.5 and the arrows are indicating the directions. In method B, where we're going with the presumed tension directions, you use the sign convention, i.e. 
plus or minus values in the formulas. Okay. There is no right way or wrong way. I prefer to use the second method, but whichever way you do, choose one method and stick with it. Don't mix and match with the methods that you use, otherwise you will mess up with the signs, I can promise you. I've done it a million times. Okay, so let's proceed, draw the equi write the equilibrium equations, try and keep the free body diagram on the screen. So we have some of the forces in the x direction, I have RCX plus FAC must be equal to zero to be in equilibrium and I can solve for this straight away so we can get that. RCX equals plus 7.5 kilonewtons. And I always double underline my answer so that I can find or get to the answers very quickly when checking calculations or for someone else who's checking your calculations. Now let's have a look at equilibrium in the y direction. So some of the forces in the y direction, we look at the free body diagram, we have RCY pointing upwards, FBC pointing upwards. So I've got plus RCY plus FBC equals zero to be in equilibrium. And therefore, we get RCY equals minus FBC, which is equal to plus 10 kilonewtons, and IE pointing upwards. And same with the plus means pointing to the right. Okay, and at this point in time, we know all of the reaction forces and we know all of the internal forces in the problem. And usually at this point then to do two things. One of the things that you should do then is probably draw a diagram with all of the forces denoted on there. So if we trace back, we know that RCY is pointing upwards and it's 10 kilonewtons. We know that RCX is pointing to the right and it's 7.5 kilonewtons. Keep tracing back. We've got FBC is minus 10. So let's just remember the node ordering that we had. So we have AB, ACB, ACB. So ACB. Okay, so. Let's find the forces that we have. Go back for your calculation. So FBC is minus 10. FBC is minus 10, i.e. it's in compression. So going that way, going that way, and it's 10. So pushing back outwards. Okay, the other result we had from joint B was we had RBX is minus 7.5. So RBX minus 7.5, so minus means it's going in the negative x direction, but it had the magnitude of 7.5. And finally, at joint A, we had the other two results that we want to put on this diagram. So we have FAC is a minus 7.5. FAC minus 7.5, so it's compression, so pushing back outwards so 7.5 and FAB was 12.5 plus 12.5 in tension so because it's in tension it's wanting to pull back away from the joints so 12.5 you could use negatives or you could use these arrows to indicate the directions so that really your choice and to finalize there's one last number missing off that diagram that's 10. And engineers can come along, have a look at this diagram, know all the forces that you've calculated without looking at all the calculations. But they can quickly, from this double underline, find the numbers that you calculated and how you've calculated them. So, at this point, this is the second thing that you should do at the end of every problem, and is you should find a self-check mechanism. Every statics problem, almost, has a self-checking mechanism. So, self-check, and in this case, 
we're going to use rigid body equilibrium to check that so rigid body equilibrium and we're going to use the diagram above actually to do this so sum of the forces in the x direction so externally on this body just the external forces now we have the rcx rcx plus rbx equals zero to be in equilibrium and substituting the value known values in rcx was positive 7.5 but rbx was negative 7.5 which equals zero and that is indeed okay now we're going to look at some of the forces in the y direction the force in the y direction so we have the reaction rcy and the external force minus 10 kilonewtons equal to zero and we'll substitute the now calculated rcy which we indeed calculated to be 10 so 10 minus 10 equals zero tick okay indeed double check on the system works you might need to use rotational equilibrium for generating an extra equation if need be but that there is this problem fully solved